Hello builders, and welcome back to the World Zoo Project, a giant zoo where I am attempting to get every animal in it. I apologize, it's been a while since I've uploaded anything to the channel, but it has been a bit crazy in life right now, but all good because I got a new job that has taken up a lot of my time. But with that new job has come a paycheck. A paycheck that has allowed me to buy a new PC, which has allowed me to continue this giant zoo project. No more will my computer scream at me for the mere mention of this save file. No more will my fans go crazy just trying to place a single item. No, now we will have all the animals. All the animals and all the guests will return. Well, okay, maybe we won't return guests to the zoo just yet. There's been a lot of lag still. And I can't imagine a return of the guests will be good in the long run. Though I can still go back and add in the animals I had to remove from the old exhibits because my old computer was so leggy. But not this computer. This computer is amazing and I love it. It is allowing me to keep this zoo going. Okay, enough talking about the old computer and the new computer. Let's talk about Australia and New Zealand. So this section of the zoo is of course for all those animals and we have designed it to be one big oasis right in the middle of the Australian outback. I had a lot of fun building this section of the zoo and it involved a lot of rock work as you know I love rock work, especially in this one. I put a lot of those red Australian rocks all over the place. But hey, you're probably done with me rambling, so let's just get on with the tour and we will do some rambling on the go. So let's do it. And so we leave the Backyard Bayou behind and move on into Australia. If you want to see a tour for the Backyard Bayou, check the link down below. At our left we have a name board for all the followers that have joined me over on Twitch. If you want your name in the zoo, why don't you give me a follow over there too, link down below. And the first animal guests are treated with are the adorable square poopers of the animal kingdom. The mini bears and the giant hamsters all rolled into one. It's the wombats. And seriously about their square poop. They really do poop little cubes. Look it up if you don't believe me. Do it. Do it right now. Pause the video. Pause the video and look it up and see if wombats actually poop cubes. You'll be surprised. And kudos to the devs who've actually put in square poop into the game for the wombats. Nice touch devs, I appreciate that. And attached to the wombat habitat is the wombat warehouse. A little store where guests can walk in, look at the sleeping den for the wombats, and then continue on shopping and buying a few little trinkets. Like some tiki heads or some signs on the wall. And across from the Wombat Warehouse we come to Penguin Cove, which is, well, it's housing the little blue penguins and another animal, the cute little platypuses, or platypi. I'm pretty sure it's platypuses, but you know, saying platypi sounds much cuter. Let's go with that for now. So these said platypi are on the right, but we'll get to them later. Let's circle around this underwater area and take a look at our little penguin buddies. Of course, we've equipped this underwater viewing area with some domes so guests can get out there and have a look at the penguins. But if they don't want to, they can see them from these glass windows. Or if they really want to get into it, they can get right into the habitat and give the penguins a little hug. Although seriously, even though they can get in the habitat, don't go hugging the penguins unless they come up asking for one. Just for a little bit of extra flair, I've went and added a underwater tunnel for the penguins to swim through if they want to. Guests can also get down here and watch the penguins swim around. Unfortunately, while filming this, there was no penguins actively swimming in that area. But let's leave that water behind and get a nice aerial view of up top, where we have a big old eucalyptus tree growing out of the middle, giving guests a little bit of shade when they come up and look down at the animals. And over now is the platypus, I mean platypi, as I have stated. This is the correct terminology for the zoo. This is also another animal guests get to see right away when they walk in from the backyard bayou. Look at them down there, cute little platypi all enjoying their food. And across from them is the sleeping cave for the penguins, and to the right is an entrance for the guests. But look at the penguins just nest in a little cave. Guests can walk through here and hang out with the penguins. But let's leave them behind and go on into the center of the area. A large oasis with a food court around it. And that is the story that we are going with for this section of the zoo. This is an oasis in the middle of the desert, and the animals and guests have flocked to it. And all of the buildings are created with most of the Australian pieces, but a little bit extra here and there with a flare of color. And at the top of the oasis is the train station, which attaches to all the other train stations in the zoo. So when it's complete, 
we will have one big long train track going all the way around the zoo showing everything to the guests. Overall though, I am quite happy with this oasis. It was the first thing I had created in this section of the zoo and it will be the first video I have out as a time lapse. Speaking of videos, I will be having videos out roughly one every week, maybe two a week if I get the time between normal life and the job and streaming. And let's show off the centerpiece of this section, the large tree in the middle, which as you see has a little door in the bottom and some windows. And this is what we call Rupert's Retreat. Rupert being my pet rat who often joins me on the stream. So we made him a little tree house in the zoo. But leaving that behind, we come to Rat Type Retreat. Rat Type being the family name for flightless birds like emus, cassowaries, and kiwis. And of course, first thing people see when they walk in are the adorable kiwis. Equipped with a sleeping area and a viewing window and some signage. And right through here, guests can walk in and hang out with the adorable fuzzballs themselves. Oh, look at them waddling around the little legs. They're so cute. Doing their habitat and the cassowaries, I ended up making it more tropical than the rest because they are, well, tropical animals. So I wanted to make them look like a more set in canyon than the more open exhibits that we have later on, just to capture that tropical feel. Speaking of cassowaries, let's fly on over there to the giant dinosaurs themselves. If there's anything alive that looks like a dinosaur, it's these guys. These giant black birds with their huge claws and beaks. Though I still love them like I love all animals. I just wouldn't be caught dead in one of their habitats. Actually, no wait, if I did get in their habitats, I would be caught dead in there because they would absolutely destroy me, I'm sure. But that aside, their habitat is again more tropical than some of the other ones in the Australian section. And I had a lot of them building it because I like making bright green habitats. And just look at them, I think they're enjoying it. They're just walling around, just waiting for someone to fall in so they can pick them to death. But let's leave these dinosaurs behind and move on to the other dinosaurs in this habitat area, the emus. Okay, I guess they're birds, but technically I'm not wrong as dinosaurs evolved into birds. So does that make birds dinosaurs? I don't know. Let me know in the comments down below. Well, we have one emu in the cave, but let's go and see if we can see the whole flock. And there they are in the distance. Let's fly on over. And here's another question for you people in the comments. Are a group of emus called a flock like any other group of birds? Or are they called something else? I could look this up myself, but I'd rather just want to know what you would call them. And on that matter, what would a kiwi flock or a cassowary flock be called? Leaving the rest of the birds behind, let's come on into Devils and Dingo's Domain. The two big predators of this section. Well, one of them is big, relatively. The other one is a pretty small predator, but just as adorable as he is deadly. It's the Tasmanian Devils. Another fun exhibit I had with them, giving them a few little places to hide underneath and burrow in. And a little cave over here by the food court, so when people are eating they can look inside the cave and enjoy a little sight of the devils. And here you will see another sign with some Twitch followers on it. If you want your name in here, why don't you give me a follow over on Twitch? Anyone who follows me on Twitch gets their name in the zoo. Link down below! So, coming back to this entrance for a second time, we will now look at the other end and at the dingoes who get their own little cave right here. Oh, these sweet little boys, the best boys of the outback. Guests then have an option to travel upwards into this tunnel and see another view of the dingoes from up top. Their habitat is mostly desert and sand with a few patches of green, especially around the sprinkler there, and near the bottom they have a pool of water, their own mini oasis. I don't know why, but I absolutely love the dingoes. Maybe it's because I love all the wolves and dog-like creatures of this game and I just want to snuggle them all, even though in real life I know they would probably want to eat me. But still, they are cute and I can't help but want to look at them. So let's leave the best boys of the Outback behind and move on to the drop bears, the koalas. For the koalas, I've created a little mini dome right here in the middle for guests to enter. And then there is an exterior bit for them to explore. And here we have some koala climb frames. Fun fact about these frames, I have attached every single climbing frame and tree that is climbable together in this one habitat. I am overall really happy with the way this habitat turned out, especially with this waterfall in the back, which feeds another waterfall and river in the back of the habitat. Let's head outside and look at some more climbing frames, particularly this koala burger as I call it. I know it looks like a burger, and I wish the koalas could actually climb up inside of it, uh, but they cannot unfortunately. 
though a man can dream that they really can. But flying through here, you can take a look at the little mini river we have in the back being fed by the waterfall in the dome. And from here, we'll go into their koala cave where they sleep. And across from them are the most cutest animals in the world. My personal favorite animal as well. It's the quakas. Just look at this little guy on the sign. Look how cute he is with his big old smile. Quakas are very photogenic animals. And if you want to lose yourself into the cute side of the internet, just type in quakas and you will be stuck there forever. Or until someone pulls you out. You have to rely on someone to pull you out of that or else you'll be there forever. Trust me, I know from experience. Though deep down, that you never really leave the quaka side of the internet. It stays with you. So fair warning. Google at your own risk. Even with the quakas in the game, I have been stuck just staring at them for longer than I would like to admit. Just keep watching them hop around and eat with their little hands. It is so cute. But let's head on to the big cousins of the quakas. In the hopping habitat, we have the wallabies and the kangaroos. Two big hopping boys that just hop around all day. What more can you say about them? They just like jumping. But moving on from here, let's go look outside and see what the guests can see, because the guests can enter the habitat. Although it must be a rather warm and dry habitat, because it is mostly desert. Although, like I said before, this whole area is supposed to be an oasis, so there's a good mix of green in there. And this beautiful little waterfall guests can walk under as well. Very reminiscent of my donkey build, if you've seen that one as well. And with that, we come to a close of the final animal of this mini tour. So let's zoom out and take a nice aerial view as we do the outro. So again, I want to thank you all for watching, and I do apologize, it's been a while since I've uploaded to the channel. But life's been crazy. It does take a while to build these zoo sections as well, plus film and edit them. But now that the Outback section is complete, you can at least expect these videos to come out once a week, maybe twice a week, as I get time between life and work. Though I don't want to deplete my backstock too quickly, as the next section of the zoo I have planned is the Asian section, and there's a lot of animals I'm going to be putting in there, so that one might be taking quite a while to build over on Twitch. But hey, if you want to come and join me on the journey and just come and say hi once in a while, click that link down below. And while you're at it, why don't you subscribe to this channel, and give it a like and comment and do all those YouTuber things people like asking to do. But hey, that's enough of the spiel. Let's end the video here, and again, thank you for watching, and stay tuned for more time-lapse videos of this whole Australian section. Have a good one, builders. Goodbye!